Welcome to evening prayer with the Stamford Methodist Circuit for Friday the 17th of November. This week's evening prayers have been guided by the theme suggested by the Methodist Church Prayer Handbook, The God of Abraham. And our scripture readings are being taken from the first book of the Bible, from Genesis. We begin our prayers this, as, this evening as we have every evening this week, using some words written in the 19th century by Cardinal John Henry Newman. Let us pray. O God, most ancient and most new, food for eternity and power of our being, you are inexhaustible in your love and infinite in your glory. You are the source of all goodness and fountain of all life. Draw near to us and bless us with the glory of your presence, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's hymn, recommended by the Daily Cycle of Prayer and Readings in the Methodist Church Prayer Handbook, is one which is rarely sung these days, maybe because it's the longest of the hymns by Charles Wesley to still appear in our Methodist hymn book, there are 12 verses of it at number 461 in Singing the Faith. I imagine it's been suggested for today because it so closely echoes and reflects today's reading from Genesis chapter 32. The tune to which this hymn is traditionally sung is called Wrestling Jacob, but we're now going to hear just a few selected verses from the hymn sung by Maddie Pryor with the carnival band, to the tune Vernon. Come, O oh, thou traveller unknown, My company before is gone, and I am left alone with thee. With thee all night I mean to stay, and wrestle till the break of day. I need not tell thee who I am, my misery and sin declare. Thyself hast called me by my name, look on thy hands and read it there. But who, I ask thee, who art thou? Tell me thy name and tell me now. In vain thou strugglest to get free, I never will unloose my hold. Art thou the man that died for me, the secret of thy love unfold? Wrestling I will not let thee go, till I thy name, thy nature know. Tis love, tis love, thou died for me, I hear thy whisper in my heart. The morning breaks, the shadows flee, your universal love thou art. To me, to all thy vows move, thy nature and thy name.
having heard something about wrestling Jacob in that hymn, we turn now to our scripture reading from Genesis chapter 32, beginning of verse 22. Jacob got up in the middle of the night and took his wives, his eleven children, and everything he owned across to the other side of the river Jabbok for safety. Afterwards, Jacob went back and spent the rest of the night alone. A man came and fought with Jacob until just before daybreak. When the man saw that he could not win, he struck Jacob on the hip and threw it out of joint. They kept on wrestling until the man said, Let go of me! It's almost daylight! You can't go until you bless me, Jacob replied. Then the man asked, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. The man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob. You have wrestled with God and with men, and you have won. That is why your name will be Israel. Jacob said, Now tell me your name. Don't you know who I am? he asked. And he blessed Jacob. Jacob said, I have seen God face to face, and I'm still alive. So he named the place Peniel. The sun was coming up as Jacob was leaving Peniel. He was limping because he had been struck on the hip and the muscle on his hip joint had been injured. So we heard that Jacob received a new name, Israel, which means one who struggles with or contends with God. Jacob received this new name and his descendants would also take the name Israel marking them out as a people of struggle. But with his new name, struggling, wrestling Jacob also receives a blessing. The story of Jacob's life is a story of never-ending struggle. His family background was characterised by deep-seated hostility. Jacob himself was a con artist who himself had been conned, a liar who had been lied to, a manipulator who had been manipulated. In many ways, he lived up to the meaning of his name, literally heel catcher. Like the promise made by God to his grandfather Abraham, Jacob, Israel, was to become a great nation through whom the whole world would be blessed. Despite being the recipient of this amazing promise, Jacob was a frightened, and anxious man. His brother Esau had vowed to kill him. His uncle Laban had cheated him for years, and even Jacob's two wives were at odds with each other. By this point in his life, he knew that Esau, his twin brother, whose birthright and blessing Jacob had stolen, had set out with a small army to track Jacob down. No wonder Jacob was anxious and afraid. To try to ensure his survival, Jacob had divided his possessions and sent his wives and children across the Jabbok River. He'd also sent lavish gifts to Esau in the hope of pacifying him. And then Jacob settled down for what turned out to be a restless night. We might wonder whether his restlessness was linked to his disturbed or guilty conscience, a sense that his past was about to catch up with him. The outcome of the wrestling, which was maybe like being tossed about by a bad dream, was that the mysterious stranger blessed Jacob, and the blessing seems to have been effective. The following chapter of Genesis records how his brother Esau received Jacob warmly, the story of Jacob pulls us back to reality as we think about the struggles with weakness and failure in our own lives. We are haunted by the sense that sooner or later our past will catch up with us. But in Jacob's experience, we recognise the struggle with things which at various times are, re are a reality in our lives. Things like fear, darkness, loneliness, vulnerability, emptiness, exhaustion and pain. 
In the end, Jacob did what we all must do. In his fear and his weakness, alone and separated from his family and unable to depend on his possessions, he faced and wrestled with God. It was a demanding, exhausting and wounding experience for Jacob, something which he carried the evidence of in his body throughout his life. But his struggle was the means by which he received the strength to face the future, strength which resulted from God's blessing. In the end, Jacob found the peace which he needed, peace with those around him, peace from and peace with God. We share in some quiet reflection, against the background of the piece of music which we've been including in our prayers each evening this week. The Latin words, Donna nobis pacem, give us peace. Our prayer to God in so many ways at this time. from among those offered for the 17th day of each month in the Methodist Church Prayer Handbook, we share a very brief spoken prayer. Its words date to around 600 years before Christ. They use an English translation of words from the Indian Upanishad texts. This prayer seems very appropriate in light of our reflections this evening. So let us pray. From falsehood, lead us to truth. From darkness, lead us to light. From death, lead us to immortality. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Jesus, the Prince of Peace, descendant of Abraham, enter today into our minds and souls, helping us to transform conflict into peace in our own small corner of the globe. May we never doubt that good can triumph over evil throughout the whole of creation. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this time of prayer. God bless you. <laughs>